Chris, Ritu said something else that, that triggered a, a question I have for you. She mentioned that during implementation, sometimes people try to automate everything and that's too much at the beginning, right? You can't go from doing nothing to doing everything. It's just too much change. But there are a lot of use cases where ERP systems can be very, very impactful by automating business processes. So how can organizations use an ERP system to automate business processes? Sure. Yeah. And, you know, ultimately, uh, at the end of the day, the ERP system is designed to move away from the manual work and to help automate many of our processes. So it really is identifying that. And I picked up on Ritu's uh, section on automation as well right away. Um, what I think is so unique about an ERP system is that with integrations, we can automate many of the different things that are happening in the world today. Um, so, and what I what I'm speaking of specifically is more the innovations in technology that continue to keep happening. So, if I think about um, warehouse management systems and how we manage inventory. And if you think about a barcode scanner and the ability to integrate what's happening in the warehouse to the ERP so that uh, there's better accuracy in your ERP system. So you make sure that you're not over or under on, on your inventory management. So the, the ability to integrate is something as simple as a scanner for however the warehouse personnel are using it to bring that information in real time back into the ERP system can be extremely valuable as compared to the way business processes would work. If you had to write it down on a note, take it back to the machine or your, your machine and then type that in, uh, the number of people that would interrupt you, that you might forget what was the quantity, how many. I mean, I worked in a warehouse in the past and that's the way we did things. So I'm very aware of how that can happen. Um, if we think about CRM systems and how we uh, integrate CRMs to ERP systems and when there is a new opportunity that your sales force should be following up on by pushing information safely from that ERP to the CRM, it can be in the hands of the sales team if they're out in the field or a technician is in the field and they're going to be calling upon your customers. Now they have this data easily available to them, whereas before they might have had to go through many contacts and information, that would be very challenging and time consuming. And oftentimes at the detriment to the customer because the information has been shared somewhere, but it doesn't always get to the, to the salesperson. So he or she is asking questions that are, aren't necessary. If we think about e-commerce and integration to uh, the ERP system today for e-commerce, we're essentially allowing customers to self-service so they can look for items, they can check price and availability for, you know, especially if they have contract pricing, they already have an account with the customer by logging into that e-commerce site, they can safely look at the, the information that they need. They can create a quotation. They can create an order. They can follow up with that order uh, over that order history. So all of these are creating an opportunity where we don't need people manually doing the work to provide answers. And I think that's the beautiful way uh, as all of these companies continue to create these new technologies that are making our life easier by integrating them in and having that ERP be the safe source, we can automate all these business processes and truly make things easier for everyone. So both the organization wins, customers win, technicians win, dealers win, depending on who's involved. Um, so I, I love the speed at which we can now move. And that's really what this is all creating. Yeah. And Chris, I, I think it's often overlooked how important it is to have a central source of truth when you have somebody goes out and is sick for a week, mm -hmm. and you don't have a central system that you can log in to pull data and information, you're really out of luck. That person has everything on their desktop, everything in their email that can cause major, major issues out of business. So even something as simple as that, 
an ERP solution can really help by having things centralized and yes. it's easy to access place company wide. Yeah. Can I just, I have this burning uh, addition to Rita, Rita's and Jacqueline's uh, list of the things that can, can fail. Please, you know, please do. I know <laughs> the list would be quite long. Yeah, no. And I, I thought the list was so good. And, but it, what triggered for me was that sometimes we're so internally, when we go through an ERP implementation, we become so internalized. We're looking at our own processes. We're thinking about our own stuff. And what we often forget is our outward facing stakeholders. What is the impact of our decisions to the customers and our dealer partners, uh, our distribution partners? You know, what's going to happen if we change part numbers and how are we going to handle that? Because ultimately, at the end of the day, we all have to continue running a business. So as we're doing our internal work, where I see things fail is when they get launched and now the customers are delayed in responses because internally things are a little, some things haven't been thought through and that's that external facing part of the organization. So I just wanted to add that as well. Yeah. If I could just a really quick piggyback on that, Chris, um, when, when we do change management, when we teach people how to do change management, we do an external stakeholder analysis as well as an internal stakeholder analysis, just to make sure you don't forget about all those other people that have to be touched and let them know what's going on because you are so right. You could have all of your internal processes done and the minute you launch a new invoice, oh crap, the customer didn't know that it had now changed. It doesn't match the PO on their side, right? So yeah, absolutely. Ritu, we've got a note from one of our audience members that I'd like to send your way. And then Chris or Jacqueline, if you have anything else to add. So Susan says, one of my suppliers is about to go through, I'll pl place it up here so you can see it, is about to go through SAP. I'm dreading it. My past experience has not been good. POs disappear. Inventory levels were always off. To be proactive, we're placing POs as early as we can. We may have to sit on product, but at least we'll hopefully get it. So any feedback from the panelists for Susan? So she's got, again, a supplier that's about to go through, it sounds like an SAP implementation. Yeah, I'll just share some of my experience. Whenever we've had suppliers who are going through any significant change, what we made sure to do was meet with them more often. Um, we would typically get reports from them and actually ask those reports to be updated. So all of our open POs would be on a report with the promise date and the expected due date. So um, often it sounds like Susan's already a little worried that some things aren't gonna arrive on time. So making sure that you know what that original promise date is, what the, the current due date is, and then um, you know making sure that you truly see when things have arrived so that you have that the information before they launch into the new ERP system, you have the historical data in a report that you can keep regularly matching up to on a weekly basis. So it's just like a check-in to make sure that all your orders are still there, that you've had the deliveries, and if anything's changing, it's communicated to you frequently. So uh, it can be a regular stand-up meeting where you have a call. We call them stand-up meetings. You have a quick call, go through the list, and then you know wait for that next update. But have some routine so that an expectation is set and communication is really clear. <laughs> 